Rivals, 11 iconic Australian surfers ply their trade on the waves that made them. If you thought these guys were good on the world tour, wait till you see what they can do at home. Every grain of sand, every crack in the reef, every bend in the bank, these guys know it and know what to do with it. Each surfer gets 45 days to choose the perfect conditions, two hours in the lineup, each surfer nominates his best three waves and you judge him. No step-offs from jet skis allowed, nothing but pure paddle power and Australia's best putting it to the test on their home court. Don't miss a beat, this is going to be mad. My name's Josh Kerr, I'm from Coolangatta, Gold Coast, and I've been a professional surfer for 20 years. Our first surfer to compete in rivals is the Coolangatta Prince, Josh Kerr. A renowned aerial innovator and inventor of both the club sandwich and corrupt flip, Percy is just as much of a threat in the big hollow juice. He grew up on the hill at D-Bar, one of surfing's premier training grounds, and after an illustrious 10-year world tour career, has traded the comp rashi in for a beaker and a test tube, trying his hand successfully as a beer baron. Looks like he's been laying off the home brews lately though. Percy is looking as sharp as ever. The Rivals concept, basically we get to pick a window and of a couple of hours um, when a swell is coming and go over free surf and just do it the way you want to do it. Obviously no step offs or anything like that, which is kind of a bummer because I love doing step offs and cheating a little bit. <laughs> but um, you know, definitely just find a good, good place to go surf for a couple of hours and put your kind of the way I guess you surf down on, on video and on the platform. and see how it presents itself to the public and yeah, see, I guess there'll be a winner chosen from how everyone perceives the way you surf. Because he's going to be gnarly, he's going to be, he's just any condition, um, he's so good and this concept just suits him down to a T. Hard to not know he's around, he's been freaking ripping, uh, so much time in the water, I think surfing with his daughter and you know, he just knew he was back in town. So he's been off the tour for a while now too. But I, I follow him on Instagram and he's here, there and everywhere and he's still ripping. So whether he's still got that bulldog in him, which he probably does. I'll just make it work, whatever it is. You know, I'm not over, really trying to overthink this process or anything like that. I'm just gonna take it as fun and just enjoy the surf as much as I can and, you know, play around out there and just do what I do. I think going back to the tour days, what, why I got, had my best years of my life on the tour was when I stopped overthinking and just enjoyed the process. Well, we looked it off the wall and it just had dropped a bit too much from yesterday, the waves, so decided to kind of call it and give it a miss today. And, hoping for a little bit more swell on the forecast for next week and yeah the bank's there everything else is lining up so just a little bit bigger waves and we're on but yeah the sand at snapper right now is insane like look at it it's kind of got the downhill slope going all the way like a ruler edge all the way to Cooley beach and i mean it is a pretty cool canvas of a wave to surf but i just think it's kind of fun just to mix it up somewhere else and Everyone's seen plenty of snapper and I feel like also snapper the wave itself kind of limits what you can kind of do on it as well. Even though it's really fun to surf and that sometimes aesthetically like shot, it's not as good as what it can be. Yeah, it was always my dream to be a pro surfer when I, as soon as I started really getting into surfing from about the age of 10, 11 and obviously growing up here on the Gold Coast, it's one of your most like idolized options of lifestyles and things to do down here in Coolangatta. You've got so many guys to look up to over the years of different generations that have made it to the top, like the highest level of competing and being on the world tour and 
and being just a free surfer, everything has been so many different options. So surfing just feels like the kind of path that's the the best to look up to and the most exciting path to take in life when you grow up in a small town like this. I was kind of a hot-headed kid, you know, growing up in the same way and um, I was really looked up to this like whole action sports movement that was happening in the late 90s and stuff like that from, from skateboarding, motocross, like freestyle motocross, all these alternative kind of sports and stuff like that. So that really played into what I idolised growing up. So. When it came to surfing, I wanted to implement all that real like high action, high impact kind of surfing. I was pretty much just free surfing my whole youth up until I was like 15, 16. Just did barely did many contests other than some snapper board riders events and stuff like that. And so I had a lot of freedom to just be able to explore surfing within myself. So airs at that time was like the most exciting thing you could do on a surfboard growing up in beach breaks like around here. So that really played into my just the way I, my mentality towards surfing, just wanted to go big and that's it. And that was kind of the way I wanted to do things. And I kind of rolled over into the lifestyle of life and everything growing up as a teenager here in this town with friends we hung out with and stuff like that. Right when I was about 16, these air shows popped up and that kind of created this like avenue and like platform that I could go and express myself on. And it really played into my strengths as a surfer I was at that point in time. And, was doing these air shows and started doing them, started winning some events and yeah, started making a name for myself, making some money and that was kind of my pathway and then up until I was about 20 I was just doing them and then I started doing, started like thinking okay, I want to try and get to, I didn't really know much about the tour, you know, I didn't really know at that point of time in my life, I didn't really even know about the process and stuff because I didn't go through these junior ranks where you did the juniors, do the QS make it to the tour, try and win a world title. You know, like I didn't have that mind thought process growing up, so it was all new to me and I was like, okay, what do I have to do? I've got to do the QS, okay? So at 20, um, you know, dug my heels in for two years, did the QS and qualified. And yeah, then from then on the tour for a year and then fell off the tour for a year, back on for a year, fell off the tour for a year and then back on for eight years straight. But the judging fell into my side of things a little bit when the, um, the tour kind of really started weighing heavy on aerial surfing and dynamic kind of surfing so that, that worked out in my favour and, and also my maturity came on at the right time and yeah, it was good. <laughs> He's known as a bit of a Johnny on the spot old Kersey. Will he luck out with the high performance beach break at D-Bar? Or will he rue turning his back on the dependable point break perfection of Snapper Rocks? <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's the old rumour of the old Kersey luck that gets around, a bit of tin arseness, yeah. Um, a lot of my mates like to put that one on me. Even a few of the boys are like, I don't worry about surfing, I just wait for Josh to get back to town because you know the waves will come when he gets here. <laughs> so that's pretty funny to hear, but no, I just I think I, I time my things right. <laughs> kind of that diamond in the rough kind of surf out there now, there's definitely good waves, but not to surf a contest. <laughs> I'd rather just have heaps of opportunity and just have fun and just be able to kind of surf, not be trying to hunt, you know what I mean, for the wave, so um, yeah, maybe shine it till tomorrow, I guess. Next call, 6am. <laughs> like there's a couple of mental nugs around, but Kersey thinks D-Bar has still got more to give. Has he melted like a caramello koala on your dashboard? Or is the coolie prince about to shower himself in gold? Place the other stage. Right. <laughs> Later, go. I almost have my whole professional career to thank Diva because I, I moved right up on top of the hill when I was like 12 or 13. 
for a few years and I feel like that across those early teenage years of my life, having that to be able to, that place to be able to run down to and go surf for those years, like when you're developing your surfing, that, that wave is just so good and has so many different faces to it and everything like that. Um, it really helps you kind of develop your surfing at a fast paced track. So yeah, I've got D-Bar to probably thank for everything and my dad's ashes were spread out there, so that's a very special place to me, so yeah. That's um, definitely a, be cool to kind of put a couple hours in and good surfing out there and see how it gets perceived by the public. <laughs> I love surfing the points, but um, yeah, I don't know if my surfing is like a true point break surfer either. So I'm a little bit erratic and try and do different things, which kind of suits more of a beach break. So um, in a perfect world, I get D-bar off the wall, really slabbing on the takeoff and having a good wall and a good air section at the end, but you know, can't dream too big. <laughs> it's nice having a bit more power when you go surfing, so you can push a bit harder and that. And I do enjoy flowing and all that down the line, but I also feel like that's almost, I, ri I ride the certain board that you know helps me do that, but I feel like it also can take a few things away from dynamicness, like when there's a bit more push in the waves and stuff like that, to be able to push harder and enjoy, you know, I just like, I just want to be able to push harder, I guess, <laughs> try and push as hard as I can on a turn and that's the finest part, so I'm sure there'll be lots of almosts, because that generally is the way I surf, I have lots of almost good makes. <laughs> that's the best place about D-Bar, it works in so many different types of forecasts, so for me, a perfect one would just be a pretty kind of glassy, Sow East swell, you know, a good little bit of energy to the swell as well, that would help a bit, just, yeah. Uh, I think that would be the perfect world. I, I think everyone in this event at their local spots or the spots they've chosen to kind of surf aren't gonna have the hardest time getting waves out there because they're all got, you know, their, their heritage kind of planted in, or roots planted in those kind of areas and stuff like that, so. Um, getting waves out there isn't as much of an issue as it is to others. Well, there you have it. Cause he's turned his back on point break perfection for a D-bar punt and pit fest. After the break, Kersey takes flight. Here we go. It's three to four foot wedging punchy classical D-bar. Cause he's got two hours to show us what he's made of. And don't forget, you're the judge. Kersey will nominate his best three waves, which you can see by heading to mysurf.tv. I just want to have a fun all-round session. I'm not really thinking about putting three bangers together or anything like that, but hopefully I'm just having fun. When I'm having fun, I feel like I'm having a good surf, so that's all that matters. It's just a bit early. I'm not much of a morning heat person. I was like, my big thing on tour, I was like, it was morning, I always was like sketching arvos. I was like, ah, I got this. <laughs> So, see how we go. He'll be hitting the sky, he won't be trying to compete with the other boys. He's got the positive energy at the moment, he's riding his own boards and he's kind of just on the flare. Um, Kersey's going to be a weapon too, so you yeah, better watch out for him. You know, he goes for it, so I can't wait to see the surfing that he was doing. Yeah, crowd's definitely an issue when it comes to Diva, but I'll try and work the line up as best as I can. <laughs> he's got the full quiv. His daughter, Sierra, is already out there throwing buckets. The stage is set for a Kersey clinic at a wave he knows better than anyone on the planet. Here goes Kersey, coming off the bottom and opening up with a footloose laza. Daza. What's he got in store for us here on the end section? Another belt. Pretty mental opener for the Coolangatta Prince. Kersey's winding up, fanging down the line, big full rotation alley-oop. I think there was even a sneaky little frontside grab at the end there. Super technical. Wow, that would have been up in the excellent range if he could have stuck that. Little float the boat, comes off the bottom and absolutely gaps it. Are you kidding me? Kersey on another runner, eyeing off the section. 
Oh, very smooth. Full rotation alley you. I mean, it's a great maneuver. There's no doubting that. But given the caliber of surface he's up against, I don't think it's going to rate in his top three. Oh, another little sidewinder wedge. Winds up. Ooh, oop, and can't stick. Now Kersey coiling up off the bottom and just jamming it in the pocket. Wow, I love the release of that twin fin. Speed float, loving the flow of this twin fin and section punt, little front side grab, can't stick it. Oh, I was loving the fluency of that, but uh, looks like Kersey's not too happy with it. He's gone into swap boards. I think he's gone for the quad fin. New board, new approach. Quad fins known for their speed down the line. Percy winding up, and that, wow! Huge lean, full rotation alley -oop. That was, uh, wow. I mean, that's an incredible signature progressive maneuver from Kersey, and that would have definitely gone into the excellent range had he stuck it, but he didn't. Goes Kersey absolutely gapping it down the line and just burying it. Wow. Huge front side gouge. Wow. The ball is almost flexing through that turn. I mean, with what he's got in the bag so far, that could well end up in his top three rides. This little inside nugget. He's catching a million waves and that, oh, huge front side air reverse. Well, that was an explosive performance to open up rivals. Our first competitor, the Cooley Prince, on his home court there at Durin Bar. One hour down, one hour to go, and one wave on the board. Find out what else kersey has got for us after the break. With an hour used up and another hour to go, Kersey has put on a solid showing. He chose D-Bar on account of its variety, and that's exactly what we've seen so far a diverse repertoire of hacks, belts, and aerials. What will he show us next? Here he goes, winding up, still riding the quad fin. Little switch foot Magoo. Ah, that's, what? That was wild. Look out, he sniffed out a little inside nugget. Doggy doors it and darts. Gaffs the bejesus out of it. A little and section fin throw. Wow. You'd think that's going into his top three. Now Kersey slashing out of the top. Beautiful roundhouse cutback. Another smooth little cutty. Looks like he's got a closeout section. Little bonus end section. Air reverse. Can't pull it though. Don't think that's going into the top three. He's on a bomb here. Buries a deep bomb turn and just gaffs it. Are you kidding me? Great speed flow. And a nice little end section click to finish it off. Well played. With 20 minutes to go, Kersey's put on a solid showing, but we know he's got more in the kit bag. Can he produce one of his patented monstro punts? Or will D-Bar serve up a crispy little nugget for the Prince to devour? Oh, this one's got a bit of grump behind it. Oh, sick cutty, the tail slide and darts. Just destroyed that section. Big float on the end. Wow. We'll see that again. I love this first turn. Nice and technical little tail slide, but this is the one. Darts. Wow. That is massive. You're thinking that's going in the top three. Looks like Kersey's last roll of the dice. And... Ooh, groovy drop wallet. Yeah, baby, shagadelic. It's a wrap. Heat one of rivals is done and dusted. I don't know about you, but I was entertained. I was out there going, why did I do this like after four days of pumping waves at Snapper when I'm so, I, after the first hour, I was so tired out there. Oh, I just saw a really good one. Damn it. <laughs> I don't think I got to like fully showcase my best surfing by any means. You know, obviously it was a little subpar, the conditions, but really fun at the same time. I had a fun surf, either way. Almost did a few cool things. Um, you know, fell off a lot like I thought I would. 
because it, I knew it was like a combination, I wanted to do something that I was trying to maybe force some things too hard. And um, I think that was frustrating more than anything. I'm like, what are you doing? You'd never do that free surfing. Like, why are you trying that there or like whatever? So sometimes I just like out there, two hours is a long time to just start thinking like, okay, just, just relax and just surf. And sometimes I just connect the dots on a few and just felt good and yeah. Uh, it was just a free surf. I know it's gonna be kind of tricky going up against some of these other guys that are gonna probably find like pumping conditions and stuff like that. So I figured I'd just, have a novelty off the wall session and it's pretty much exactly what it was. <laughs> Sounds like Kersey's not overly impressed of his performance. A week of pumping waves at Snapper can burn even the best of him out. But in terms of high fidelity beach break surfing, that was still pretty mental. Kersey's heat's a wrap and here's his top three. Get your pen and pad ready. At number one, on the quad fin, just gaffing it. Wow, root power from the Coolangatta Prince. And then this thing stuffs a little inside nug, doggy doors it straight into a sick gaff in the pocket. And then this, a lovely little fin throw on the end, pretty critical, pretty great surfing. Wave number three, a real bowly one off the wall. I love that opening turn, but this is the money turn. Darts, just gaffs it straight into a float. Great surfing. Don't forget, head to mysurf.tv to rate Kersey's top three. Next week, North Narrabeen's finest Nathan Hedge puts his patented frontside rail game to work with some long-running left-handers. My name's Smitty. Don't be on the inside.